I am a personal trainer and I do online coaching on the side. I have been training people since 2019. That's when I graduated with a degree in exercise science from Bloomsburg University, um, where I also played soccer there as well. And I've trained a lot of people these past couple of years, young and old. Where did the interest <laughs> for exercise science come from? Um, well, I've been obsessed with soccer like my entire life. So basically, when I was picking out a college, I was like, okay, what's affordable and where can I play D2? Because D2 was my goal. So once I found a school that I kind of got on the roster spot, and then then I was like, all right, well, what do I even want to do? I knew I wanted to do something medical, I think. Like, I liked science the most. Um, but And then I kind of led me to looking into exercise science a little bit more. Um, at first, I thought I wanted to do cardiac rehab. I did my internship in cardiac rehab. Then I found that it was too kind of repetitive. I couldn't be as creative. I like the medical setting and I still do, but I think it's a little bit too serious for me. I like to be creative. Is that what you saw yourself going into when you first you know, heard of exercise science? Well, to be honest, I kind of thought of that as like, I, I didn't come from money. So I saw like your realistic side of it as like, okay, we need to do something serious. So I was almost out to prove to myself that I could get into some high medical job, then have like a steady income. Um, so I didn't really even think about like, oh, I could actually be like training athletes and training people feeling like I don't even have a job, but I have a job and I'm making <laughs> good, decent money. Um, so to be honest, no, I didn't ever think about that. I kind of fell into training um, just kind of randomly. I was going to go back to school. I was looking at nursing and I was looking at um, deeper into like the surgical procedures of open heart. Um, but that's like a whole different story. So, yeah. And then I kind of got a job as a trainer and it stuck. Like, this is like what I'm going to do. I like it a lot. You talked about playing soccer in college, and, and I'm sure that was a big experience for you in high school as well. Did you get any strength conditioning or any type of kind of like training from that side of things besides the, the sports training in high school or, or, you know, in college even? We really didn't have any like strength and conditioning. We didn't have a, a strength and conditioning coach actually until like my junior year, which is crazy. It's crazy to think about because the service that I am providing for like these high school freshmen girls or like even younger is a way better service than no offense than what I had received all through um, high school and up into college until like my later years. We really didn't have a quality strength and conditioning coach in my freshman year. We actually didn't have one at all at uh, at Bloomsburg, but not to diss them. They have very good strength and conditioning coaches now. I just don't think that that was like it wasn't an option back then. Did you see your performance or what did you see kind of change when you did start to utilize that? In my later years, I kind of, we were in the weight room and I kind of like fell in love with that side of it. Yes, we, I still had to go to soccer and I still had to run, but I really, really liked like building myself. I, obviously, like I played team sports all my life and that was kind of more like individual, like nobody else mattered. You focus on yourself, you're building yourself. And I really like that aspect. But as for like the soccer side of things, it definitely like gaining strength just for like injury prevention is so important. Like I've seen so many girls tear their ACLs just because they're weak. I think that before it was kind of more me versus others. Like I was a distance runner as well. And it was always I was looking out for who was in my age group in the, in a race and I would find that person and I would try to like stay with them to win it. 
and this, like, you really don't, cause everyone's so different. Everyone's different strengths and different squat types and stuff like that. So, um, I really liked just like focusing on myself and like nothing else really matters. Whereas with soccer and, you know, other bullshit can get involved, like coaches, like maybe you don't play as much or maybe you're in a different position. So that doesn't yeah. matter with this. Yeah. It feels like you have a lot more control of your own destiny, mm-hmm. which is at the same time, almost a little bit scary as well, because it's like, okay, what I can do is based on what I, you know, what I put into it. How do you think you've used those lessons from helping others in your own training? I think that sometimes I can be, I like my clients to be like perfect, perfect form. I hold them to a really high standard. I preach to them about their diet and sleep, but then I look at my sleep and I'm working late and waking up early. So my sleep is definitely not that great. And maybe with my, oh, and also taking off, taking days off. I am such a sucker. Like I want to be in the gym. I'll tell clients take off. Like it's not a big deal. And like, it's hard for me to do that myself. So I think maybe like I'm starting to realize that. And that's like a big thing I've learned. Like what am I doing with myself? And I've learned that from myself. (laughs) So working with, you know, that many people every year, every, almost really every day, every different experience you have, it feels like you learn something that it's like, oh, wow, they, they didn't teach us this, or I never knew it was going to be this way. What was kind of, did you, have, have you had anything like that? There were, you know, the biggest thing where it's been like, you know, in the textbook, it might've said this, but in reality, this is kind of how it really went down. Honestly, I want to say like the bulk of what I do, I had no idea in school in, you know, they did not really teach us. That's not like a diss on them. We learned like the textbook side of things, which is helpful, like the muscles. I didn't know all the muscles and stuff like that, which is really important, obviously. But I've learned so much from training and I forget even your actual question, but I've literally learned everything pretty much on my own is what it feels like through following good people on social media, like asking trainers with experience. Um, I've, you know, done my own research with uh, certifications and uh, just, you know, really putting in the work with doing my own research. I listen to a lot of podcasts. I learned from, I have an online coach as well. So I learned from him there's just endless knowledge out there. So most people Mm -hmm. have this kind of misconception that, Oh, if you're a fitness lover, like you just love it all the time and you don't need any help. Right. Exactly. And I think everybody has their own biases. Like every coach out there has their own biases. And for myself, as I was saying earlier, like I will beat myself up. So I need somebody to tell me like what's appropriate because I'll take it overboard for sure. When it comes to that balance, though, um, is there anything that you kind of do other than maybe having somebody in your corner like a trainer? Do you, you know, do you keep a journal? Do you do you do anything to kind of balance out the the too much from the not enough? Other than like mm-hmm. I said, that trainer. I do keep a journal. It's right here. I do keep a journal. It's right here. Actually, I am a person that likes to write everything down. I love like journaling my to-do list every day, even if it's like stupid things, I like checking it off and just kind of like writing down like gratitude stuff, stuff to make your like mental health better (laughs) and more positive. But um, yeah, I like, I like that kind of thing. I think it really helps with like mental clarity and stuff. How do you think you've kind of developed through your own fitness journey mentally? I've, like to think of myself as a pretty mentally tough person because of soccer was pretty grueling um, and distance running. You really have to kind of shut your brain off and just do the work. So that was kind of like my background with the mental toughness side of it. 
And now my training has kind of switched. So I kind of train to failure or borderline failure, which is a whole different ball game. Um, it is really, it, that one's hard mentally for something like, you know, a hack squat where I really just want to give up. Um, <laughs> that one's really hard to keep going, but I think that my training has gotten more intense. I'm training with a purpose now, whereas before it might have been going through the motions for a little bit, but now more intense, more purpose and more focus on form and feel as well. Where do you find that purpose comes from? My motivation really is seeing progress in myself. That sounds pretty self-centered, but it is what it is. Like I see the progress in myself and that is motivation. Like I got here through consistency of what I do and how hard I work. So I have to keep doing it. That's kind of like, you know, what goes on in my head. When it comes to the people you've worked with, um, what's kind of that biggest thing that you've seen that is holding people back? Is it a matter of discipline? Is it a matter of time? Like, what do you think is the biggest reason people don't succeed in the long term? I would say most of it is they want that quick result. And if you're working with me, you're not really going to get the quick result unless like, I mean, I have had people get pretty fast results through being really dialed in, but it's not going to be some magic. I won't put you on rough cardio right away. Like it's not, or like ever, that's not going to happen. And I think that turns away some people because they're looking for that drill sergeant of a coach, which that's definitely like, that's not me. It's going to be very sustainable. And I'm trying to build you through like adding the healthy habits so you can make this a lifestyle, not just the, oh, I have a Vegas trip and I need to lose 20 pounds. Like, I don't even want to take anybody like that because, you know, I don't, I don't really have time for that. But another reason would be they're not buying into the program, which is that kind of falls in the same category of they want that quick result. So that would be the number one thing that um, I would say clients fall off because of that. And I think when people start like full force, you know, you have your diet and you have your whole workout plan, you're working out like six, seven days a week. I think that is a recipe for disaster and for you to fall off if you're not doing anything. And then you want to do that, which that's a lot of what people want to do because they're like, okay, I'm motivated. Like, let's do this. But I'm like, that's not what you want. You think you want that, but you don't. So, right. What do you think? Is, is the biggest change or the biggest piece of information that you've kind of, um, when I say that, something like realizing the importance of getting more sleep or realizing uh, maybe that you should stretch more? Like, what has there been anything within your training life that's been like, once I made this change, things kind of like progressed a little bit quicker and smoother and easier? I think definitely like the macro side of things, like I really needed help from a coach because I really did not know where to put myself. I can actually eat a lot more than I thought. Um, but that was like the biggest game changer, nailing down the macros, I think, because I'm I've already hydrated. My sleep is, I get pretty good sleep quality. That does play a big part, but I feel well rested during the day. I never really crash. So I think the macros were the biggest game changer. There's a lot of bad information out there. So I just feel bad. Like the person that's getting hurt and all this is, you know, the average person that's just like scrolling through social media. I have, I'll have people send me stuff all day from TikTok. Like, is this true? And I'm like, no, it's not true. <laughs> Don't worry. Like <laughs> there's so much bad information out there and it's really hard to determine like what's legit and what's not. Have you kind of found yourself ever struggling with like, oh, wow, this this cool new thing that is, uh, you know, just come out. Maybe we should try to add this into, you know, my programming now. Or have you kind of hmm. been pretty solid on sticking with? Because it's kind of tough. You don't want to like neglect new things just because they're new, but you also don't right. want to just add in crazy stuff. That's a good question. Um, I have really been 
the person to only stick to the basics, really. I'm not a fan of the razzle-dazzle trainer, the lunge curl press trainer. I just like, you know, that's totally not my thing. I am very much the basics. And because the average person, they are not going to nail down the basics. Most people don't even have the fundamentals down. So if they're getting bored with that, then good luck. (laughs) I can't really think of anything that I've really hopped on the trend with training. Now, social media aspect, growing like a brand on online, I have hopped on like the TikTok. I wouldn't have done that, but I realized that like that's kind of where we're shifting. Like, okay, we need to post on there so I get some engagement through mm-hmm. different platforms. <laughs> you have to get used to kind of getting bored or finding things to like tweak because a squat, it's like a never ending, never ending battle. <laughs> How do you hope to leave your mark? How do you hope to make maybe a good, a a lasting, a positive change in the world of fitness? Just preaching the basics and what works. I'm navigating through all the bullshit. Kind of like if you've ever listened to Mind Pump, I'm big on Mind Pump. I love their podcast. Um, They're kind of like very straightforward about things like this is what works, the basics. And then, you know, then there's all of the noise on the side. So I guess maybe preaching what works, old fashioned, whole foods, squats, deadlifts, stuff like that. Thanks a lot for coming on and sharing that on on the podcast tonight. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. If people want to follow you on social media and kind of learn from what you're doing outside this podcast, where can they do that? Um, Well, my Instagram is Maddie, M-A-D-D-Y underscore Garini, G-O-R-I-N-I. Um, I also have a YouTube channel. Pretty sure that's just like my name again. And my TikTok is also my name, Maddie Carini. I'm pretty sure everything is very basic. No crazy names there. (laughs) 